Chapter 15. 65 million years ago, years before the day before yesterday, George and Harold grab a box of salty crackers out of Miss Singer Brings' desk. Then the two, then the two friends stepped inside the purple potty and closed the door quickly. George reset the controls and pulled them on the chain. A flash of green light lit up the room, and the purple potty vanished. Suddenly, George and Harold were transported back in time to the late Kent Carnegie's period of the Mesoc era, a time when dinosaurs ruled the earth constantly. George and Harold peeked out of the purple pie, which was now nested in the branches of a tall tree. Here, chuckle, chuckle, chuckle. Here, chicky, chicky, chicky. Called George. Polly, you want a cracker? Cried Harold as he tossed a handful of salties in the air, into the air. Suddenly, the two boys were swarmed by hungry pterodactyls. For a while, a friendly looking pterodactyl of quiz, to be ex- to exact, swooped down and grabbed some crackers from Harold's hand. Ah, oh, look! said Harold. He likes me! Great! said George. Let's get him into the time machine and get out of here. Carefully, Harold took the pterodactyl in, in his arms and carried him into the purple pie. Then, the boys closed, closed the door behind them, reset the controls, and pulled down the chain. Suddenly, George and Harold and their new... Repellent pal were transported forward in the time in time the day before yesterday. The door of the time machine swung open and the three friends sailed out of the purple pie through the library window and up over town. George looked down on the city streets until he until finally woke he located Miss Singer Brain's car. There she is, George cried. I sure love our new pterodactyl, said Harold. I'm going to name him Crackers. Don't give him a name, said George. We're not keeping him, we're just borrowing him. George, Harold, and Crackers swooped down and landed on Miss Singerbrain's car, which was stopped at a traffic light. Mr. Miss Singerbrain screamed in horror. Wait! cried George. There's no there's no reason to be afraid. It, you're just dreaming. I I dreaming? asked Miss Singerbrain. Sure. Think about it, said Earl. Purple pop purple pies appearing out of nowhere. Kids running around in the laser zappers, spirit dark Parasaurus is laying on your car. That stuff only happens in dreams. Gosh, you're right. Gosh, you're right, said Miss Singerbrains. But it all seemed so real. We trust, uh, well, 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 trust us, said George. In a few minutes, you won't remember any of it. Before long, George. George, Harold, and Miss Singerbrains were gliding back to school with their good pal, Crackers. The Cabinotron 2000 and the Fergishma Caller 2000 were safe once again. Soon they arrived back at the library. I'm going to keep an eye on Miss Singerbrains, said George. You, you, you take that paradoxal back where, you found, where we found him. Aw, oh, can't we keep him? asked Carol. No, said George, snarly. 
He belongs in his own time. Now take it back. Oh, man, said Gerald sadly. Harold carried crackers into the purple pie and closed the door. After a few seconds, the time machine disappeared in a flash of green light. A half an hour later, another flash of light filled the room, at the, and the purple pie was back. What took, what took you so long? said George. Um, nothing, asked, said Harold. Do you have any trouble taking crackers back home? asked George. Um, not really, said Harold. You did take him back to his home, didn't you? asked George. Um, sure, said Harold. Though he doesn't, though he doesn't sound very sure. Quickly, George zapped Miss Singlebrains with the forget you call at 2000 and jumped into the purple pie. Then, with a quick flash of green light, they were gone.